watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. and by viewers like you. I would like to label the ongoing Arab war against Israel, not as a land or a border issue, but as nothing less than old-fashioned anti-Semitism and Jew hatred. That's all it is. I am personally getting sick and tired of leaders around the world continuing, continually telling us what we may want to hear, but not the truth which we need to hear. They tell us, as long as you, give, as long as you Israelis give a little more land, a little more money, a little more restraint, a little more appeasement, we can have peace, they tell us, in the Middle East. We can have the Arab war against Israel end. But well, now let me state my opinion about the truth. The Arabs don't want peace with the Israeli Jewish state. They never wanted peace with the Jews of Israel. And let me tell you something else. As much as we all want Israel to have peace with the Arabs, Israel can and will survive and thrive without it as they have since 1948. We don't have to have it as much as we want it. God said we're an eternal people. Nevertheless, President Obama and the nations of the world think they're differently. They wrongly believe that the Palestinian Arabs and the Arab Islamic nations really want peace. And all Israel has to do is stop building homes in East Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, give up most of the land there, and set up a state. But land, of course, is not the issue. Israel has given up all of Gaza, half of Judea and Samaria, where 99% of the Arabs live, have things gotten better? They've only gotten worse. And Obama and Hillary Clinton are pressuring only Israel and Netanyahu relentlessly, making no serious demands on the Palestinian Authority to end incitement, arrest terrorists, or outlaw terrorist groups. In the past year, Joe Biden publicly used the word, I condemn Israel for building in East Jerusalem, Hillary Clinton said she called it an insult that Israel is building in East Jerusalem. She said it's destructive of the peace process, asking is Israel really serious about peace? That's what Hillary Clinton says, when Israel has made all the concessions and offered even more. David Axelrod called it in the front. And President Obama himself, when he was in Indonesia, publicly in Indonesia, condemned Israel for announcing building Jewish homes in a Jewish neighborhood in Eastern Jerusalem. And where was he when he made this statement? He was in Indonesia, a major Muslim country that doesn't even allow Jewish Israelis to enter Indonesia. How powerful and important it would have been if Obama had strongly urged this Muslim country there to accept the Jewish state of Israel, to allow its citizens to enter Indonesia, and urge them to condemn radical Islamic terrorism. Why doesn't Obama publicly urge the leaders of the Muslim countries to have a major press conference, urge the imams and the sheikhs, the Muslim imams and sheikhs, to have a press conference to publicly condemn radical Islamic terrorism as a nightmare and an outrage? Why doesn't he make that demand? And this freeze that is now being demanded for the second time, not only did it do nothing for the first 10 months, they didn't negotiate, they didn't arrest terrorists, they didn't end incitement, but it sends a phony message that settlements are the problem, that that's why there's no peace. It makes the world focus on that. In 1937, the Arabs were offered a state by the Peel Commission. They were offered 95% of the rest of Palestine outside of Transjordan. They said no. In 48, they were offered a state. They said no. In 2000, 2008, they were offered a state. 
They said no every time. Land is not the issue, and they don't have a desire for a state. This is simply evil, despicable, disgusting, Nazi-like Jew hatred. They don't want the Jews to have a state. That's what this is about. And this is so racist. Why can 1.4 million Arabs, Muslim Arabs, live in Israel among 6 million Jews, but 700,000 Jews can't live among 2 million Arabs in East Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria? What kind of racism is that? Mahmoud Abbas and Saad Barakat made speeches in the last month saying when we get our state, no Jew will be allowed to live in our state is what they both said in public speeches. Well, I would like to say if no Jew would be allowed to live in any possible potential future state of Palestine, I want Israel to say no Arab will be allowed to remain in Israel. The world wouldn't accept that, would they? East Jerusalem, of course, is historic Jerusalem. This is the real Jerusalem that's written about in the Torah and elsewhere throughout ancient history. Western Jerusalem is the newer part. It's not our holy city of Jerusalem. We've had a majority in Eastern Jerusalem of people there. The Jews have been a majority since the 1850s. It's mentioned hundreds of times in the Hebrew Bible, never once in the Koran. Every year we Jews say, next year we Jews should move in Jerusalem. President Obama says, next year no Jews should move in Jerusalem. We can't tolerate this, we can't allow that. At a minimum, Mr. Netanyahu, why aren't we demanding that the Palestinian Arabs should also freeze construction in Eastern Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, if the Jews are. Prime Minister Netanyahu himself said to the Czech Prime Minister, if Israelis can't build homes in the West Bank, Palestinians shouldn't be allowed to either. He said it last year. Mr. Prime Minister Netanyahu, why don't you say that now to President Obama? <laughs> it's not what we're talking about Jews building in territory belonging to another sovereign nation. And I won't get into it, but the, there's a legal, religious, and historical basis that the Jews have a much greater claim to Judea and Samaria and Jerusalem than the Arabs ever had, ever could, or ever will. From the Balfour Mandate, the Sam Remo Conference, to Article 80 of the UN Charter, to Walt Rostow, Assistant Secretary for, for Under Secretary for State, saying Israel is permitted to administer the land until a just and lasting peace with secure borders for Israel. But while President Obama and Hillary Clinton condemns Israel regularly, they are mystifyingly and deafeningly silent when it comes to Palestinian pro-terror, anti-peace actions. In the last few months, when Pres Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas said to journalists from the Arab world, if the Arab states want war, and if they will fight Israel, we will join them. <laughs> we are in favor. Obama and Clinton were silent. When Fayyad walked out of a meeting with his Israeli counterparts at the UN after refusing to sign a joint statement accepting Israel as a Jewish state, silence from Obama and Clinton. When the PA recently celebrated the memory of Dalal Magrabi, a vicious Arab terrorist murderer, celebrated the memory of the of Abu Daoud, the mastermind of the Munich massacre, Obama and Clinton were silent. When the PA ambassador to Iran said that the PA will continue its war in Israel until the complete eradication of the fabricated regime of Israel in due course. Obama and Clinton were silent. When the moderate prime minister, so-called Salam Fayyad, and Abbas paid condolence calls to the families of slain terrorists, and while lauding the terrorists who murdered Israelis as heroes, there was silence from Obama and silence from Hillary Clinton. When Mahmoud Abbas in the last few weeks called Tel Aviv and Jaffa and Accra, Israeli cities, as occupied cities, silence. When there were 
recently TV shows of imams saying we must fight the Jews and kill them. They are the enemies of humanity to Allah. Again, silence, no words at all. But when a Jew says he wants to live in Jerusalem, all hell breaks loose from this anti-Israel administration, which is what it is. And when, <laughs> and when Mahmoud Abbas has named dozens of schools, streets, sports teams, and computer centers against vicious killers of Jews, President Obama doesn't find time to say a word about this horror. And for this silence from Obama and Hillary Clinton about the PA's promotion of hatred against Jews, promotion of violence against Jews, promotion of the destruction of the Jewish state, I say to President Obama and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, for shame, for shame, for shame. And these horrible words that I mentioned, that sheiks, imams, and Palestinian Authority leaders have their impact. The Talmud tells us that the words are so powerful that the whole, that a mountain can hang by the thread of a single word. That's the power of words. And we see it here. Through all this incitement, 82% of the Palestinians demand the right of return. Majority of them now support terror attacks upon Israelis. 60% of them, in a survey only last week by Greenberg, Quinlan, and Rosner, said, we accept to establish a Palestinian state, <laughs> but only if ultimately there'll be no Israeli state, only under those conditions. 85% of Palestinians oppose any peace if it means compromising on the right of return, compromising on Jerusalem, on borders, or on settlements. They say, then we don't want a peace if there's any compromise. And 60% of Palestinian Arabs favor Iran possessing nuclear weapon. So much for the Arab world being with the Israelis in their fear of Iran getting nuclear weapons. If it means killing Jews, many Arabs think it's a good idea for Iran to do this. Despite all of this horror, in the last two years, President Obama has given the Palestinian Authority more money than any administration since, since the Palestinian Authority was established. Almost $2 billion in American aid has gone to the Palestinian Authority with no conditions, no demand that you end incitement. You change the names of the schools. You change your media and your speeches. You arrest anti-Israel terrorists. You outlaw terrorist groups, even though that's what Oslo and the roadmap requires. The Palestinian Authority gets more money per capita than any nation on the face of the earth, than any nation in history. We never hear about that. It is time for Jewish leaders and Christian leaders who care about Israel to begin to publicly and strongly criticize President Obama and Mahmoud Abbas and Fayyad. Jewish leaders aren't doing that. We at the ZOA, of course, are. A recent poll by B'nai B'rith in June of 2010 found that two-thirds of Israelis believe American Jews should begin to criticize Obama's policy toward Israel. Let's fulfill their desire. And do you know that American Jews, in a poll late spring, by a percentage of 67% to 28%, greater than two to one, disapprove of Obama's policy toward Israel. So American Jewish leaders have every right and have the basis to finally criticize President Obama and the outrageous demands that he's uh, making. And we at ZOA urge President Netanyahu to abide by the promise he gave on November 30th, 2009, when he said last year, this 10-month freeze, he said, is a one-time decision and it's temporary. The Jews of Judea and Samaria are an integral part of our people. They donate, they serve, they volunteer, they are our brothers and sisters. So I'd like to tell them, as well as all citizens of Israel and our Palestinian neighbors, that this decision is temporary, just as it says in the cabinet decision, as I have personally stressed in both closed and open forums. We will go back, said Prime Minister Netanyahu, to building and building strongly at the end of this freeze. Mr. Netanyahu, 
Keep your promise to the Jews of Israel, the Jews of Judea and Samaria, and to the Jews of the world. Please, Mr. Prime Minister. But when I speak to the officials in Israel, including people in Netanyahu's office, they say we have to do this freeze because we don't want to be blamed for stopping the peace process. And I said, if you have a freeze for three months, they're going to give you borders you'll never can accept. Talks will break down. You're going to be blamed anyway. There's no way out of that. You should just fervently, strongly, and courageously stand your ground as to what's right and begin to speak only about the Palestinian Arabs and the fact that they're the ones promoting violence, hatred, and war, not Israel. We Jews did not come to Israel, we should always remember, as colonialists. We came neither like the British imperialists nor like the French colonizers in Algeria, nor like the English and Dutch settlers in South Africa. We Jews did not come like emigrants seeking a new continent, a new homeland. We came back to our ancient homeland, given to us by God Almighty, King of the Universe. We were the inhabitants of this country who have been driven away from our homeland by force. But people said the whole world is condemning Israel and saying Israel is wrong. Can the whole world be wrong and the Jews and the Jewish state of Israel be right? Is that possible, Mr. Klein? Let's look at our history. In 1981, Israel destroyed the Iraqi nuclear reactor. The whole world condemned Israel. They were wrong, we were right. The whole world was poly polytheistic. We Jews alone pre preach belief in one God. We Jews preach the day of rest. The whole ancient world mocked us as lazy. We were right. The whole world was wrong. They said we crucified a Jew, Jesus, which was a complete falsehood. The whole world was wrong again, and we were right. In the Middle Ages, the whole world said that we Jews killed Gentile children <laughs> to get their blood to make matzah. We denied it. They said we poisoned the wells of Europe and caused the bubonic plague. But we were right. It was all lies. The whole world was wrong. The Crusades, the blood libels, the Talmud burnings in England and France, leading those nations to expel Jews for centuries, the Spanish and Portuguese Inquisition, the ghettos in the Mortera case in Italy, the Dreyfus case in France, Bayless in Russia, a century persecution of Soviet Jewry, the Holocaust, the whole world in all those cases were wrong. We Jews along were right, and the same is true today. <laughs> Don't listen to the countries of the world and the leaders They don't have our interests at heart. Let's listen to Hashem, to God in the Torah, who says, I will bring you to the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give it to you as inheritance. Go there and live there. Be fruitful and multiply. We must be strong. We must not be afraid, for God is with us. The cause of Israel is moral and just. We must act and speak out with courage. Truth and justice and God are on the side of Israel. With your help, with the strength and the will of the Israeli people, with the help of Almighty God, the people of Israel shall dwell in their holy land forever and ever. We will prevail as the Torah promised us from 3,000 years ago. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you.